San Diego Mayor Todd Gloria wants to answer your questions. Welcome back. I'm Carlo Chiquetto. I'm Marcella Lee. Mayor Gloria is joining us tonight on this first Monday of December for your questions answered with Mayor Todd Gloria. Mayor Gloria, welcome to the uh, 630 half hour of our newscast. Appreciate you being here with us. Thanks for having me. Congratulations, Marcella, on becoming the anchor. I think that's awesome. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. All right, big news. Another promotion today. Uh, San Diego City Council voted 8 to 1 to appoint District 9 Councilman Sean Ella Rivera as next council president. Uh, ousting Councilwoman Jennifer Campbell, I believe you tweeted about it, saying that you were excited about him getting the position. What does this mean to you and your agenda, and what kind of impact is it going to have on San Diegans? Well, I think we had uh, great leadership under Council President Campbell. Uh, this decision is up to the City Council, and they've chosen uh, Councilmember Ela Rivera to lead them. I think for the Council's purposes, I think you're going to see uh, energetic and uh, progressive leadership out of Council President Ela Rivera. Uh, in terms of my agenda, you know, Sean and I are in agreement on many issues. Uh, we both believe we must invest more in infrastructure. Both of us want to see more attention on homelessness, particularly from a compassionate perspective. Uh, and I believe that we'll be able to work well together, just as we have for the last year that he served on the Council and I've served as mayor. We're going to talk more about infrastructure in just a moment, but first let's talk about the city's vaccine deadline that has come and gone uh, effective last week Wednesday. What's the procedure from here on out as far as firing those employees who remain unvaccinated? So we have begun the process of uh, notifying uh, employees that are not in compliance with the policy. Uh, we will continue to work with them, communicate with them regularly, make sure that there are access to vaccines. We'll make it as easy as possible. My goal, Marcella, is to not lose a single member of our city family. Every one of our employees is valuable, but it's precisely for that reason that I want them to get vaccinated. It is important uh, that they're healthy, uh, that they themselves are safe, that their loved ones are safe, and that they're not uh, spreading uh, the virus in the community as they provide public service to our neighborhood. So uh, we will work with the remaining employees that have not been vaccinated. I am heartened to say that in the five days after the city council adopted uh, the vaccine mandate for city employees, 463 of our employees were vaccinated. And that was just in five days. My hope is that by the time all is said and done, uh, that the majority, the vast, vast, vast majority of our employees will be vaccinated. And we will, as a, as a city, will be safer because of that. Will you have to move forward and are you prepared to move forward if those employees though who choose not to get vaccinated at this point uh, continue to refuse to be vaccinated yes for, for those that do not uh, receive a religious or a medical exemption yes we will be left sadly with the only option of uh, ending their employment with the city again it's my hope uh, that we will not come to that my plea to every one of the employees who have yet to be vaccinated uh, is to get vaccinated as soon as possible and a reminder that over 80 percent of our city employees have already done so and i believe that by the time we start looking at terminations which wouldn't be until sometime in january uh, that we will be much closer to full vaccination and again by doing so it's safer for the employee and safer for the public that they serve all right sounds like you're giving uh, everyone a grace period at least to the end of the year and hopefully uh, they will will abide by that vaccine mandate. Let's talk now about the beach vendors crowding the boardwalk. We've had a lot of feedback about this uh, from the community. A proposal to crack down on them, I understand, will be presented later this month, scheduled for December 14th. Will you be supporting that? Yes, it is necessary for us to regulate street vending. Marcella, it is uh, quintessential San Diego um, that the state legislature in 2018 passed regulations allowing these uses and cities across our county, Coronado, Chula Vista, National City, all acted to implement local ordinances. Sadly, my predecessor in the previous city council did not take such action. And so we're left with the circumstances we're at today, which, as you mentioned, this is a flashpoint in many of our communities, particularly our beach communities. Council member Jennifer Campbell has been an exceptional leader in this area. She is working aggressively to bring an ordinance for the council next week. And I look forward to signing sensible regulations that provide for microenterprise, but at the same time, make sure that our public rights of way uh, are accessible to all members of the public. And I recognize that some of our boardwalks, uh, some portions of our uh, city parks, including Balboa Park, that isn't necessarily the case today. I think sensible regulations can provide that kind of relief. Uh, about a minute left with you, Mayor Gloria. We're going to go from talking about what's on the boardwalk to the streets themselves and things underneath it. Infrastructure. We had a couple of big water main breaks in late November, just a couple of weeks ago today, I believe, uh, caused a lot of problems, very expensive, and it was unique. Uh, you mentioned in a press conference just how long it took to shut the water off because of those downstream pressure issues. When are we going to see our aging infrastructure be addressed? And we've seen all this federal money, the, these big build 
back, better bills go through. Are we going to be getting in any of that from the Biden administration to help? Well, I'm going to be fully prepared to make sure that San Diego is completely capable and competitive of bringing down these dollars. In fact, my office has already hosted a region-wide meeting of all of our local stakeholders, the County of San Diego, SANDAG, MTS, et cetera, to make sure that we put forward the most competitive proposals. All of these dollars out of the federal bipartisan infrastructure bill are competitive. And so we have to compete for those dollars. I believe that San Diego can successfully compete, and we're already making steps to make sure that we put forward the most competitive proposals. Uh, to your question, though, about our water pipes, Carlo, as I mentioned to the public on the day of the break, we have 6,000 miles of water and wastewater pipes in the city. We have about 185 a few years ago that are identified at high risk. We have been steadily repairing those. We're down to about 55 or so left miles left to go. At our current time frame, we believe those will all be repaired by 2025, and it can't come a moment uh, too soon. Uh, breaks like what we saw in downtown the other day are not only disruptive to water service, but they're extremely expensive to taxpayers. That's why we have to stay on the path that we're on and hopefully be competitive for both federal and state grants to repair these hopefully quicker than 2025. Especially with all the focus on conserving water, we do need that help as soon as possible. Mayor Gloria, thank you so much for joining us on this first Monday of the month. We will see you next month. Happy holidays. Thanks. It'll be 2022 uh, then. Can't come soon enough either. Uh, happy holidays, San Diego. I'll see you all real soon.